EA Game Changers only got a few hours of time playing Star Wars Squadrons, but already some very fun Easter eggs have been spotted, many of them in the ship customization options. Today I'm going over everything I found, even though I'm sure I'll have to do an updated, more extensive video when the game comes out in October. Also, shout out to Battlefront Updates and Bombastic, who caught some actual footage of things I didn't. I used a few screen grabs from their gameplay throughout the rest of this video. Let's start with the New Republic ships. Of course, you can get red, gold, green, or blue squadron color schemes, but when you go over to Blue Squadron, it mentions being led by General Merrick from Rogue One, but also Lieutenant Valeria. She was in the LEGO Freemaker Adventures show, voiced by Yvette Nicole Brown. Hera can also be seen in the Squadron's trailer wearing the same outfit she wore in the Freemaker Adventures. It's fun seeing that series recognized in canon outside of the LEGO universe. The Blue Squadron description also mentions a battle at Bakura, which is a planet that's shown up in canon material already, but was first created for Star Wars Legends in The Truce at Bakura. Pink Squadron has its description redacted, but I wonder if it's a reference to the Star Wars fan film Pink 5 from 2002. The Cavern Angels paint job might be my favorite, and it's modeled after the starfighters briefly seen on Jedha in Rogue One. They were the squadron under Saw Gerrera's command, and Chasna Chaddock of Alphabet Squadron once flew with them. I believe Kalima Squadron is new, but the description says it was formed by Bail Organa on Crate. That connects back with the book Leia Princess of Alderaan, where we see the old rebel base in action. Caravan's Courage is, at least in name, a reference to the Ewok made-for-TV movie Caravan of Courage. You can get a chromium finish on your ships, and that's the same metal that covered Padme's Nubian starships as well as Captain Phasma's armor. For some reason, I didn't see this one for X-Wings, just the other ships, but there is a Phoenix Squadron paint job. They were seen in Star Wars Rebels under the command of Harris and Dula, and the ships are said to have been painted by Sabine Wren. Over in decals, there are a handful of fun connections. Sabine Wren's Starbird variant can be used in various colors, as well as the Phoenix logo she used in Star Wars Rebels specifically. Alphabet Squadron gets a logo, but it's strangely not the same emblem created for the actual books. The Partisan's logo is present to complete the Cavern Angels look, and there's an Ewok decal celebrating Tugtar, who we'll come back to. Moving into interior cosmetics, specifically holograms, you can have a Mantellian Savrip Dedrick piece. It is, quote, undoubtedly the least powerful unit in the game, but I think that's just writer's bias, since we see Chewbacca using it to great effect. There's a hologram of a monkey lizard like Salacious Crumb. It's meant to be like a reminder of the pet someone might have at home, maybe a critter picked up from Batu. And there is a pilot portrait, an art piece again done by Sabine Wren. The pilot is said to be missing but believed alive, so maybe it's meant to be a rendition of Ezra Bridger. The dashboard is pretty straightforward, but we have to return to talking about Tugtar the Ewok. They single-handedly sabotaged an entire landing platform worth of TIE fighters in the Battle of Endor. I have a theory that the bobblehead is based off one of the Ewok skins from Battlefront 2, but I need to continue looking into that. You can also hang items from your cockpit, including a crate crystal from that old rebel base I mentioned earlier. Over in components, the Y-Wing can be equipped with a Cory composite beam cannon. Cory appeared in Star Wars Rebels as the creator of the B-Wing. His prototype had the same composite beam cannon, and I guess they moved it over to the Y-Wing to deal out some massive damage. For pilot customization, the Sentinel helmet is the closest I could find to a Biggs helmet with the yellow and black checkerboard, and I'll take it. One helmet is made of Bayora bronze. Bayora is a planet mentioned in the Battlefront 2 story as a pit stop for Lor Santeca, who is attempting to hide the location of Luke Skywalker. And you can have a helmet made of chromium like the ship. The material is said to have been a donation from Queen Saruna, who appears in the Shattered Empire comics. She donated chromium to the New Republic after they helped drive away an attack from Operation Cinder, which is also a playable moment in Battlefront 2. Some heavy leather gloves are said to be made from Goraslug hides. Balatik of the Guavian Death Gang wore a Goraslug leather coat in The Force Awakens. But let's move over to the Imperial side. The most exciting paint job to me is the Ashen Cardinal. Red stripes on the wings were first used by the 181st Fighter Wing in Star Wars Legends, led by Sunter Fell. This is its first canon mention, but red stripes have been used to signify elite status in canon already. The Ashen Enforcer is said to patrol the Smuggler's Run. That's an asteroid field that became a haven for smugglers back in Star Wars Legends, although it has already been mentioned in canon material. 
The volcanic paint job makes TIE fighters look heavily burned and damaged, and the reasoning behind that is that they were near a volcanic eruption on Mustafar near the Corvax Fortress. The Corvax Fortress is from the VR experience Vader Immortal, an old Mustafarian stronghold that you and Vader explore in the game together. The Emperor's Guard paint job is all red. That ties back to Star Wars Legends, where the idea of the Imperial Royal Guard having their own special fighters originated, but that idea has since been used in Star Wars Resistance, showing First Order ace pilots also use red paint jobs. Similar to Phoenix Squadron on the New Republic side, there is an additional paint job for the non-fighter ships in the Empire. This one is the 204th Fighter Wing, also known as Shadow Wing. They are the main enemies of Alphabet Squadron, and because it was kind of hidden away, I genuinely can't find anyone with footage of it, but that's it in the menu right there. For decals, the Imperials can use the Sith Eternal Emblem. That's interesting to me, it's definitely appropriate for the faction, but since it didn't ever appear until the Rise of Skywalker, I assumed it was more secretive and not widely used within the Empire itself. Sky Strike Academy gets a decal, and I like that one a lot. It was a flight academy for elite pilots, and both Wedge Antilles and Hobby Clivian attended it until they were extracted by Sabine Wren in Star Wars Rebels. The Hutt Cartel can be represented on TIE Fighters as well. The first Darth Vader comic by Kieran Gillen showed Vader setting up a partnership between the Empire and Jabba the Hutt. As the description says, the Empire allowed the Hutts to continue operating in exchange for resources and information. Likewise, you can slap the emblem for Crimson Dawn on your tie. Similar to the Huts, they were allowed to continue operating. I'm guessing they had some issues with Maul's rule, though. I have a feeling he was removed from power before Crimson Dawn was fully allowed to operate. For the cockpit interior, you can get a hologram of Commander Gideon Hask. People have been asking if we could see Inferno Squad in the game, and here we kind of do. Maybe they will physically appear as well, but Gideon Hask was a member of the Elite Unit, and the only member to stay loyal to the Empire after the destruction of Vardos. As for the dashboard, you can have a carbon-frozen Minoc. Apparently, your pilot caught the creature eating through your fighter and decided the appropriate response was to freeze it and use it as decoration. You can also show off your Medal of the Emperor's Fist. That medal first appeared in Star Wars Galaxies. Its depiction here looks exactly as it did in Star Wars Legends. You can have a Corellian Hound Skull, which is grim, but those creatures were first seen in Solo, a Star Wars story. The Lord Vader's statuette is interesting. The description says he commanded the 501st Legion, but the book Thrawn Alliances kind of did away with that, creating a new group called the First Legion. I believe the reasoning was that Anakin commanded the 501st, and he or the Emperor would want to distance himself from any aspect of his old identity, hence the First Legion was created instead. But maybe Lucasfilm is going back on that. It's not a big deal, it's just interesting. And in Hanging Flare, there is a Lucky Paw. That looks to me like it might be a Vulptex Paw from Crate. You can have a Crate Dragon Tooth from Tatooine. Of course, the skeleton of a Crate Dragon can be seen in A New Hope. Obi-Wan imitates its call to scare the Tusken Raiders, and you actually get to see and fight one in the Legends game, Knights of the Old Republic. In pilot customization, one helmet is called Foundling's Fortune, which I assume is a reference to the term Foundling used by Mandalorians in The Mandalorian. The Obsidian Reaper helmet might be a reference to the Imperial Obsidian Squadron from Star Wars Legends. The Special Operations helmet looks an awful lot like the Inferno Squad helmet. The Elite Security helmet also shares the red stripes that identify more skilled pilots. There is an ISB Loyalty Officer's helmet. The ISB was the Imperial Security Bureau, of which Colonel Wolf Ularin was a member. A bronze helmet is meant for barons, and the Von Reg and Cyanar families are mentioned. Cyanar Fleet Systems was responsible for designing many TIE starfighters, and Elric Von Reg was an elite TIE pilot for the First Order, but it would appear that his family was involved in the Empire as well. And finally, before wrapping up, I noticed that when you create your pilots, there are a couple of fun inclusions when you randomize your name. I saw both Kian Farlander and Ace Azamine show up. Kian Farlander was the protagonist of the first X-Wing game, Ace Azamine was the protagonist of X-Wing Alliance. I didn't have enough time to cycle through all the names, so I assume there are even more to find. And we were told that the build we played was not final. There are going to be even more customization options to look through in October, and I'm sure the story mode will have plenty of connections to other Star Wars stories. We already know of a handful between Squadrons and the Alphabet Squadron books. 
But that's it for today. I didn't cover all of the cosmetic options, just the ones I considered to be Easter eggs. Both Battlefront updates and Bombastic have covered them pretty extensively if you want to see even more. Let me know if you caught any Easter eggs I missed in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.